See, do we have any participants? I've got one. Me. If no one shows up in a minute or two, I'll know that I screwed up, screwed something up. Yeah, definitely something screwed up. I usually have a lot of students by now. Hmm. Hmm. Check my email, Luke. Okay. Why? Why is no one there? Seven O V A M C. What the hell? Jacob, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, there's no one here yet, but were you able to get on in the normal manner? Yeah, um, I think the thing is you, um, you sent the email, but there's only like a few people on it. What? On the email, it says two and like, there's only like, 10 people on the email recipient like that jerry hey. asked me okay. jerry asked me if he if he got an email and i said yeah but then like he didn't okay thank you let me uh let me deal with that oh my god it like it, oh my gosh okay all righty here just one second uh forward Unbelievable. This is just ridiculous. Have I mentioned how awful technology is? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm forwarding it 
you know, when I send it to you guys, it's very easy. I just click one particular thing. Wow. Okay. So now I just sent it to everybody, but we'll see. I sent it through loop mail. Oh, maybe post it on classroom too. Yeah, I guess I'll have to do that. Oh, just between you and me, Jacob, before I do that, would you prefer all my emails to be via classroom or via loop mail? I think uh, classroom because you can get notifications. Okay, there. so you guys like those notifications. Yeah, I mean, I think right. it's, it's easier to keep track. Okay, good. See, I, I don't like notifications. I, I don't want anyone notifying me of anything. You know? <laughs> Just stop. I'll live my life. Okay, okay. okay I'm gonna uh, control C. And now I'm gonna go on to Google Classroom. Okay. And then um, share. And I'll do the share something with your class. Share with the class. Control V. Okay. And it's going to be to uh, period one, period four, and period two. Okay. And now host boop. Jacob, could you let me know? Did did you just receive that a Google Classroom? message thing um let me check um i got the one for loop mail but um... thank you jacob thank you for helping me i just supposedly posted it i don't know if that means you guys are gonna i just said share something with your class um yeah i see it Okay, so will students have been notified of this? Yeah, they, sh they should be if they have the notifications on. Mm -hmm. Wow. <clears throat> Amazing. I have no idea why. I mean, I only click to, to send an email to the, all the students in three classes. I only have to click three boxes, right? So uh, I don't understand why like eight or 10 of you would receive an email and the other 60 wouldn't it, or whatever, 60 whatever, if I only clicked three boxes, a box mm. for first period, second period, third period. So it just goes to show, I think it was the Russians. The <laughs> Russians. Wow. Well, I got uh, some people, that's good. Jada and Justin and Shreya. Thank you for coming. Also, make sure you have your complete names on there. So, like, I got a Hui Li, and I don't know who that is. That's Jerry, he said. Who is that? That's Jerry. Jerry Hi, Mr. Shana. Sorry. I'm using my mom's Zoom account. <laughs> oh, okay. My bad. Sorry. No problem. If you can change it, that'd be great. If you can't, what can you do? You know. Yeah, I'll try. But I don't know if I can change it while I'm inside. Right. Exactly. I mean, yeah. So don't. Ah, don't worry about it, Jerry. I just. I know. I know it's you. That's fine. Yeah. Because that happened last week when when everyone was stuck in the waiting room. Yes, I, I, like, I found it. Oh, you did. Oh, you figured out how to change your name. Yeah. It's just in the participants, and then you just hover over your own name and then rename. Yeah. Nice. Okay, good for you. Here, let me see if I can change my name. Uh, no, maybe I can change it here. Uh, rename. Okay. <laughs> now rename myself. Okay. There we go. <laughs> 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 oh, 
I'll wait till we get more people before we start. We have nine so far. For everyone who's here, I appreciate it. Thank you. Y'all wait another like five minutes. <coughs> <coughs> Hey, there's me in the virtual background. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I'll have to get a virtual background someday. So, so Jacob, let's say I've got like a really bright window behind me. Will the virtual black background essentially keep that light from like, you know, making things weird? Um, or, or will the light shine through that virtual background? I think, I think the virtual background will overlay it, but then like your face is still the same, like how your appearance right. is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, then I might try that because I, I ended up just putting blankets over my windows so that it wouldn't be so bright that it makes it all weird. But uh, if a virtual background will do that, will we'll block the windows essentially, then I should just start using a virtual background. Yeah, I think it makes a distinction between your face and like whatever's behind you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anything behind you just gets blocked. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, we've got... Uh, how many participants do we have so far? We've got 10 of you so far. I'm going to give it a little bit longer. Boy, what a, what a mess up on my part, huh? Yeah, I still, I, I have no idea why the, it only sent it to ten, eight of you or whatever, instead of all of you. It's just a big mystery. Well, for the 10 of you who are here, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming. Um, a couple of things I want to say, and I'm going to have to send out a, a uh, email, you know, repeating everything I'm about to say. Um, number one, on Google Classroom, when you check in, it would actually be easier for me if you turn in an assignment even if what you turn in is just a blank document. But it's, it's easier for me because I can click on the classwork and, and in one, you know, uh, what do you call it? On one screen, I can see everybody who turned in the assignment. Whereas if people make comments, you know, making private comments, then I end up having to check my email and, and check all of the individuals you know, where I got the notification in my email. Um, and that's just a bigger, a way bigger hassle. So I guess what I'm saying is from now on, just turn in an assignment on the check-in. And it doesn't matter what the assignment is. Just make it a black document. Just so I know you interacted with the system. That's the first thing. And welcome, Brandon. Welcome to our happy little class that uh, doesn't have a lot of people in it. Oh, I'm getting more people. Yay. Um, the second thing I want to say is the test Tuesday is going to be on chapter 20. And I'm going to require that you guys be on a video like you're seeing with me the entire time that you're doing the exam. The reason I'm going to do that is because of my expectation that that's the way the AP exam people are going to do it. If the AP exam, if they're going to give you guys an online AP exam and expect there to not be rampant cheating, it seems to me the only way they can prevent that is for you to actually be on screen the entire 45 minutes. So that's, I, I don't know how they're doing it. They, on their last thing that I read, they said they would let us know in late April, you know, what, what the, you know, how we're going to be doing the exam. But my expectation is you're going to be doing a video like this during the entirety of the exam. You know. But I, we'll see. Um, before I go on, any any questions or comments or issues? Oh, 
Okay. Are you gonna send assignment for uh, the wellness check or? Am I gonna what? I'm sorry. Are you gonna post something for us? It's like turn in an assignment for the wellness check or? Just yeah, yeah it, it, what it okay. is is going to be just every day it'll say check in and then that day. So like okay, on, okay. Google, on Google Classroom, there's one that says check in 4-9 or 4-9. Okay, nine. I see it. Okay. Yeah, and then just turn in a blank document. All right, you know? thank you. And, or if you want to write high on it and then turn in a document that's not high, <laughs> that would be great too. All right, thank you. Mm. You're welcome. Um. Also, if anyone misses the test on Tuesday, then I will have a scheduled makeup exam, and that scheduled makeup exam will be on Friday. And I'm not sure what time it'll be Friday, but it'll be done in the same way. You'll have 45 minutes, you'll have to be on video, it'll have to be a different version of the exam than the one everyone else took, and it will be wonderful. Um, also, I, I'm available all day Friday. We don't have any classes Friday. So I'm just available. I'm sitting around, you know, playing poker on, on internet or whatever. So if anyone wants to email me, feel free. Also, I think I'm going to have a Zoom thingy from one to two where I'm just there on Zoom available for anyone who wants to just, you know, come by and, and, and ask questions or say hi or whatever. So I'll, I'll put that in the email as well. So I'm available all day Friday, but I will specifically have an hour of Zoom where Big Dummy is gonna be available uh, for that hour. Hey, any questions or issues? Um, this is Shana. When, yes, Dev. When you're gonna um, issue the test, is it gonna be like a document, um, like a PDF that you're gonna post, or is it gonna be on Zoom? You're gonna post the, the test on Zoom? Good question. Right now, I had planned to have it just be a PDF. It was going to be a PDF that all either school loop you or, or Google Classroom you. And, okay. and in fact, now that we have enough students for it to be a, a reasonably large sample size, um, how many people, you know, I've been sending all of the emails to you guys via school loop. How many people would prefer that I send it to Google Classroom by just doing the raise hand reaction thing? How many people prefer yeah. Google Classroom? <laughs> or a thumbs Rocking up is you. fine. So, oh, okay. So, so I'm getting a sense that the majority of you prefer Google Classroom. So, okay, then, then I think I will do the Google Classroom. Uh, School loop sends late is the problem. Yeah. Oh, oh, it sends it late. Yeah, I just got your like Zoom meeting thing. Like, oh no, no, he ten minutes ago. Send it. Yeah, that was my uh, that was my screw up, Dominic. Although, frankly, I think it was technology. E even though I clicked the little boxes that said "send it to periods one, two, and three, School Loop only sent it to a handful of you guys. Like, I, I don't know how it did it. There, there's there's nothing I did that caused it to send that email to only like eight or nine of you. So, yeah, but it was School Loop that screwed up. So, I guess that doesn't make me a big fan of School Loop either. Now that I think about it. Okay, then, then I'm going to send all emails via, uh, via the Google Classroom now. Yeah, Google Classroom gives you a notification on your phone, too, whenever you post. Like, Mr. Um, Morrison does that. So whenever he posts, we can see that he um, okay. has an announcement right away. Thank you, Daryl. Yeah, and, you know, it's funny. I was mentioning to Jacob that that's a, that's a, a, a facet of Google Classroom that I actually don't like. I hate being notified of stuff. It's like, stop, you know, stop poking me. Every time someone has some comment, I get notified. I don't need to be notified. But, but you guys want to, so there we go. I'm going to notify everybody. You'll Thank you. Poked. Okay, well then, now it is time. Oh, we're going to be doing this until uh, 12, until 1.15, and then I have to sign out and get ready for robotics. So are there any questions or issues specifically on the review Xerox? Or anything else? But I'm thinking the review. Where Xerox. was the review Xerox? It, oh, shoot. Wait. It was on an email. I was on, it's on calendar. Yeah, it's, oh, on, it's, yeah, it's on, ca on the calendar. Yeah, yeah I, I, I haven't seen anything there. So yeah, that, okay, I'll check there. 
Okay, thanks, Justin. Yeah, it's on the calendar. That's just, since I've done it that way all year, I decided to just continue doing it that way. Maybe I should have attached it to the email I sent you as well. My bad. But yeah, it's on School Loop calendar. Any, so any questions or issues? Can right, Jessica's here, yeah. Number 18. Number which? Number 18. 18, okay, Naomi. Let me look at number 18. Okay, this is using Kirchhoff's rules, find the current in the 10 ohm resistor. Okay, great. Here, I'm gonna do the screen share thing. Oh, please work screen share, please, please work. Here you go. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, it's a screen share miracle. Okay, so looking looking at number eighteen um, here, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Um, whoops, can my iPad? Okay, good. Oh, now it's lagging. Stupid thing. Okay, I, I want to remind you on your test Tuesday, you aren't going to be asked to find the current. You're only going to be asked to draw the formulas, the, the equations. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the process of Kirchhoff's laws. Uh, step one is I need to define the currents. And so uh, here comes the currents. Uh, this current here, I'm going to call it I1. This current that comes down here, I'm going to call it I2. And the current that passes through the 50 ohm resistor, I'm going to call it I3. Are you OK with me defining those currents? And it doesn't matter what direction you make them, so I just made them random, random directions. OK, as step two, you have to go through the resistors and make sure you know what the direction of the voltage drop is. So since I1 is going through the 30 ohm, the voltage drop across I1 is the positive side is when you enter and the negative side is when you exit. Um, right? And the same thing for I2 and for I3. So now I know what the positive and negative sides of those resistors are. In addition, I can even get the voltage drops themselves. You know, the voltage drop is just resistance times current. So the voltage drop through the 30 ohm is gonna be 30 I1. The voltage drop across the 10 ohm is going to be 10 times I2. And the voltage drop across the 50 ohm is gonna be 50 times I3. And now I'm ready to do my laws. The loop laws say that you must start at a particular point, I'll call it point A, and then go either clockwise or counterclockwise and have the, this is Kirchhoff's voltage rule, make sure that the rises, the voltage rises equals the sum of the voltage drops. Let me uh, put that down a little bit. Second here. All right. And so starting at point A, I'm going to go clockwise around this left loop until I get back to point A. So starting at A, I encounter the 10 volt battery, and that's a 10 volt rise. And then as I go clockwise, I encounter the 30 ohm resistor. And that's a voltage drop, because it's going from positive to negative. So that's a drop that's 30 times I1. And then as I com continue clockwise around that leftmost loop, I've got a voltage drop of 10 times I2. And then I've got another voltage drop of 30 volts. And then I get back to point A. So I'm waiting for the, the screen share to catch up. 
Okay, so th there's one equation. So Naomi, before I do the other ones, is that okay with you? Yeah, that's okay. Okay, then I I'm gonna do the second voltage equation. And to do that, I'm gonna look at the right loop. And I'll start at this point here, I'll call it point B. And again, I'm gonna go clockwise till I get back to point B and make sure that my voltage rises equal my voltage drops. So starting at point B, I'm gonna go up the circuit and I have a 30 volt rise because my little walking man is walking and it goes from negative to positive. So it's a rise of 30 volts. Then I've got another rise, a rise across that 10 ohm resistor of 10 times I2. And then as I go across, I have a voltage drop of 50 times I3. And then finally a voltage drop of 20 volts. And that's my uh, second equation. And a voltage drop across, good. And then finally, the third equation is going to be Kirchhoff's current law. And that's where you just look at a node, Kirchhoff's current rule. And when you look at the node, you just have all the currents into the node has to equal all the currents out of the node. So I've got I1 going into the node and that's got to equal the sum of I2 plus I3, the currents coming out of the node. And I just want to say again, that this is the only thing you need to do. You don't need to make a three by three matrix and solve like I think I may have done in my lesson. Uh, but you don't have to do that. All you have to do is provide the equations themselves. And that's good. You will definitely get a problem, probably somewhat similar to number 18, you know, with, with a few resistors and a few voltage supplies. And I'll just need to see those three, three equations and that's it. Any, uh, also, I will have no review problems. So like number 19, there, you're not going to have number 19 on that 45 minute uh, test. Any other questions or issues on the review? Or on anything else with that? Um, Mr. Shana? Mr. Yes. So does that mean for on those review Xerox? Um, oh, wait. So everything except for a number 19. Um, is pretty much chapter 20, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so we do everything except for 19, pretty much. Yes, now the test I give you will probably be even more abbreviated, but I haven't decided what I'm taking off yet. Okay, I see. So, like looking at numbers nine and 10, there's some redundancy there. So my guess would be one of them will go, you know, so I'll only give you a problem like nine or a problem like 10. I won't give you a problem like both nine and 10. Okay, I see, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I, I wanna make this test so that everybody pretty much will be able to get done, you know, in, in, a, in, in 45 minutes, and then you'll be able to upload it to Google Classroom. Any other, yes? Can you go back to number 18? Sure. Yes, what about, I'm looking at it. Go ahead, do you have a question? Maybe I can answer. No, I just didn't get a chance to copy down the whole thing. Wow, okay, here, I'm Sorry. gonna screen share. Here, let's see if screen share doesn't screw up. Uh, I'm a screen sharing now. So there it is. There's no lag now. I can put my finger there. No, nope, now there's a lag. Are there any other questions? Yeah, there's my finger. We've got a nice, you know, 10 second, 15 second lag. Any other questions or issues? So we'll, I'll do more problems if you like or answer any questions you have. Can you go over number three? Yes, it would be my pleasure. Number three. Okay. 
Here, I'm going to get out of the screen share and go back on and hope that the lag goes away. Here we go. Okay, so we're looking at number three, where it says a three meter copper wire has a resistance of six ohms. Find the new resistance if you use the same material, but had nine times the length and six times the diameter. This is reminiscent of those gravity problems we used to do, where you know that the resistance, which is six ohms, is going to equal rho times L over A, right? That's our formula for resistivity and resistance. But now they say we're going to have some new resistance, which I'll call R prime, and it's going to be the same material, but now it's going to have nine times the length, and it's going to have six times the diameter. Well, if you multiply the diameter by six, you're multiplying the radius by six. And if you're multiplying the radius by six, then you're multiplying the area by 36, because the cross-sectional area is pi r squared. So that's the part you need to get. You need to get that by multiplying the radius by 6, you're multiplying the area by 36. So this ends up being 9 over 36 times rho L over A. And so that's going to get you your, your uh, 1 quarter times 6 ohms, which is 1.5 ohms. Because rho, rho L over A is 6 ohms. So is that okay? Yes, thank you. Yay, you're welcome. Thank you, thanks for asking. I'm gonna get out of screen share. Bye-bye. Okay, so we've got 19 participants. Wow, hey, any other questions or issues? Um, for number 19. Yes, Song? I could, I tried to, do it, but I couldn't, like, I just couldn't get, like, past step one for some reason. Like, I drew a few lines on everything and, like, couldn't get, like, anywhere. Okay. So, so looking at number 19, um, they say that it's frictionless, correct? Oh, oh, so, so part A, you're okay with part A. Normal force does no work because the normal force is always perpendicular to the direction of motion. Yeah. Okay, find the maximum displacement of the spring as it stops the box. Did you do conservation of mechanical energy? Oh, well, I, no, I tried to do, for some reason, I tried to do F equals semi. Yeah, don't do that. I mean, that might work, but this is a, since it's frictionless, you know mechanical energy is going to be conserved. So yeah, just let your MGH equal your one half KX squared, and you'll get the maximum displacement of the spring. And then for part C, you're still going to do uh, conservation of mechanical energy, but you're going to use that to find the velocity of the block right before it hits the blob. And so you'll use conservation of mechanical energy to find the speed of the block right before it hits the blob. Then you'll use conservation of momentum to find the speed of the block and the blob right after the collision. And then you'll use kinematics to answer their question how far away from the edge of the table did it go? So this, this is the sort of question you'll see on the AP exam, where in one problem they're doing conservation of energy, conservation of momentum, and kinematics, all in one problem. Although, you know, interestingly enough, they say it's not going to be really very quantitative. So they're, they're going to probably ask, you know, something qualitative about this process. Any other questions or issues? Uh, could you do number eight? Jessica, it would be my incredible pleasure. Number eight, for the following home circuit, draw where the fuse would go, that one? Yeah. OK. Um, here, I'm going to screen share. Uh, but I got to tell you right now, while I'm screen sharing, a fuse has to be in series with everything for it because you want, if the fuse breaks, you want everyone to be denied current. 
And so the, the way, the place you're gonna put the fuse is right there. If you put the fuse there, if that fuse is drawing too much current, so that pretty soon the fuse, what's called breaks, which means it becomes an open circuit, like a, a switch that's turned off, then everybody's denied current. So that's where you put the fuse, right there in series with the circuit. Is it okay if you put it after um, below the parallel circuit? Yeah, that's totally okay. Um, that's not uh, correct as far as building code goes. Like if you, uh, Jessica, if you ever like remodel a house and you're responsible for the electronics of the house, then make sure your breaker switches go right next to the power, the hot lead. Don't put your breaker switches in contact with the ground. Wait, could you repeat that last part? I didn't hear. Oh, oh, just, uh, just in, in, if you're, if you were to remodel a home, and you were the one in charge of hooking up the electricity, you know, from the street to the house, and and that electricity that has to go through your breaker box, which has all your breaker switches, make sure that your breaker box is attached to the hot lead, not the cold lead. That's it. Just because code, building code says you want your breaker switches attached to the hot lead, not to the, not to ground. Um, Even though it'll work theoretically, but building code says let's just make sure and have it attached to the hot lead. Wait, so in the drawing, how can you tell which end is the hot lead and which one's the cold lead? Oh, you can't. You can't. I'm, I'm just assuming that this is negative and that's positive. So you're right, I was just making that assumption. You can't tell, but in real life you can tell, absolutely. In real life, the hot lead is the one where if you touch it, you get electrocuted. Okay, thank and, you. Yeah. Any other questions or issues? Can you go over number 14? Yes, Naomi, it would be my pleasure. This is the one where you're finding the internal resistance of a battery. So let me, let me do that now. Number 14. Um, whoops. Okay, great. Um, so we're going to have to make a, a, a circuit of this. So I've got a, whoops. I've got a nine volt battery with an internal resistance attached, or rather an internal resistance that's inherent to the battery. So there's my battery with the internal resistance. And then I put six ohms across the terminals. So here's my six ohms. And I measure a terminal voltage of seven volts. So, I'm measuring with, with a voltmeter, you know, I have a voltmeter attached across the six ohm resistor, which is the same as it being attached across the terminals of the battery. And the voltmeter is measuring seven volts instead of nine volts, which means since this is a voltage rise of nine volts, this is zero volts and that's seven volts, that means you have a two volt drop across the internal resistance. Secondly, because there's a seven volt drop across the six ohm resistor, that means the current, the current going through that six ohm resistor must be seven volts divided by six ohms, because V equals IR. So you've got a seven volt drop across the six ohm resistor, and it's a six ohm resistor, so the current is gonna be seven sixths amps which means since it's seven six amps going through the six ohm resistor, there's also seven six amps going through the internal resistance because they're, they're all getting the same current because this is the only circuit that there is. And so now we can say uh, the voltage across the internal resistance has to equal the current across the internal resistance times the internal resistance. So the voltage drop across the internal resistance is two volts. The current going through that internal resistance is seven sixths of an amp. And then from that, you can get what the internal resistance is. So those are the two things you need to find 
to get the internal resistance. Number one, the voltage drop across the internal resistor, and then number two, the current going through the internal resistor, which is the same as the current going through that small resistor that you've attached across the battery. What's the difference between an internal resistor and a resistor? That's a good question. The internal resistance of a battery is not some discrete resistor where you can open up the battery and remove the resistance. The internal resistance of a battery is inherent to the battery. It's, it's like charge doesn't move through the electrolytic solution from the anode to the cathode. Charge doesn't do that without there being some resistance to its flow. It's not a resistanceless process. You know, the, the charge has to fight its way a little to get off of the anode and fight its way through the electrolyte and electrolytic solution and fight its way onto the cathode. You see what I mean? And so, so there's a resistance associated with a battery, but uh, like I said, you can't like remove it because it's, it's, you know, innate to the battery itself. But, okay, but every bat, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, every battery has internal resistance, and that's pretty much going to limit how much current your battery can deliver. If your battery has a large internal resistance, then it's not going to be able to deliver a lot of current because you'll get a big voltage drop across that internal resistance, and the terminal voltage of the battery will become zero. Hey, we got time for one more, probably, before 1.15. Any other questions or issues? Can you do number 11, please? Sure. Beryl, for the circuit shown on problem number 10, redraw the circuit showing where you'd place an ammeter to measure the current through the 20 ohm resistor and a voltmeter. Okay, this is a really important problem, especially for the AP exam, because they need you to know that ammeters have to be in series and voltmeters have to be in parallel across what you're measuring. So. There's the 20 ohm resistor. You would have to put your ammeter in a series where what, whatever current enters and exits the 20 ohm resistor must also enter and exit the ammeter. So your ammeter is going to be in series with the 20 ohm, but the voltmeter has to be in parallel across the 20 ohm where one lead of your voltmeter is touching one side of the 20 ohm resistor and the other lead is touching the other side of the 20 ohm. So put your ohm meter in series and put your voltmeter in parallel. Yeah, and you'll definitely get a problem like that. I need you to know, even though it's kind of unfair because we're not actually doing the lab where you get experience using a voltmeter where, where it becomes you know, second nature to attach voltmeters uh, in parallel across things, and you guys aren't doing the lab. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, anything else? I'll turn off the screen share. Could you do number 20? Number 20? Yeah. Number 20 is my big monster. Uh, yeah. Okay, let me just set that. Um, okay. Uh, who asked? Is that Jessica? Yeah, me. Okay. Um, let me screen share really quick. Okay, so so your strategy, Jessica, is this is actually just a plain old find the equivalent resistance of the circuit and then find the current out of the battery and then do your Sudoku thing. And so let's go ahead and get the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Do you see that you've got 10, 20, and 30 in series? So that's going to be, you know, 10 plus 20 plus 30 in a series. And then do you see that that 60 is in parallel with the 40? 
And then now that you've got 60 in parallel with 40, that's going to be in series with the 50 and the 60. And then once you get that, that's in parallel with the 70. Is that, a, oops, let me just, okay. So that's in parallel with the 70. And then finally, once you get that, that's gonna be in series with the 80 and the 90. So plus 80 plus 90. So so that's how you get the equivalent. Oh, let me just. So like I was trying to do Kirchhoff's um, loop rule and the junction rule thing with it. And like, I just got really confused. Uh, I gotta tell you, using Kirchhoff's laws on this problem is, is not a good choice. because because you've got three loops. And, and so you're going to end up with three loop equations and two node equations. So you're going to have five equations with five unknowns. And that just is a bummer. So no, you're going to want to do it this way. Because, because once you, oh, my internet connection is unstable. Yeah, you cut out a little bit. Okay, thank you, Ryan. So, so so anyway, Jessica, once you find the equivalent resistance, you divide the voltage by that equivalent resistance to get the current, and then you're just going to do Sudoku across everything. You know, whatever that current is, that's the current going out of the battery. That's also the current going into the battery. You can find the voltage drops here. And then once you find those voltage drops, you can find the voltage drop from A to B, and you just work your way around the circuit. So how do you know um, when to do that and when to use Kirchhoff's rule? If you have multiple batteries, you're stuck using Kirchhoff's rules. But if you only have one single battery, I'd say don't use Kirchhoff's rules. Go ahead and, and do, you know, use your ability to simplify the resistances. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And kids, guess what? It is 115, so I declare us done. Thank you for attending. I apologize for screwing up the email, even though it wasn't my fault. Uh, I blame technology. And so I'll send you another email, you know, summing up what we talked about. And, and I'll have the email be on Google Classroom. And uh, I'll be available Friday from 1 to 2. So good luck, you guys. I'm going to say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Mr. Shana. Have a good Bye, day. Mr. Shana. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shana. Okay, Mr. Shana. Bye-bye.